Go in JMA A. You might be wondering why it says cell membrane diffusion osmosis when these are notes on cell environments. Well, that's because the notes in cell environments are on the back of this page. So, hopefully you remember everything about diffusion and all the good stuff about osmosis. On the back, where we talk about cell environments, and you see it says a teabag demo, so you should have watched that video already. We are looking at osmosis related to cell environments. So we have three environments. One is called hypertonic, one is called hypotonic, and one is called isotonic. We're going to look at hypertonic first. So what we have, this oval shape is symbolizing a cell, and the beaker is containing some sort of liquid solution, and that's the cell environment. A hypertonic solution, we will have more solute outside the cell than inside. That means we'll have less water outside the cell than inside. And what happens is water is going to flow to try to balance out the concentration on either side of the cell membrane. We know a cell membrane surrounds a cell. So when this occurs, we know that water wants to go from higher concentration to lower concentration. So we have to draw some arrows. And we're going to draw about five arrows. You're going to put an arrow like this, and this, this, and this. Five arrows leaving the cell, going towards the surroundings in the beaker. Anywhere where the word is missing, fill it in. Anywhere where the word is in red and already there, underline it. So we've talked about the concentrations. Water will be flowing in and out of the cell, but overall, more water is flowing out of the cell, and the cell shrivels. And so you have to draw in a cell like this and make sure it's smaller than what you started with. An example of this in the real world is if you've gone camping and maybe slugs have been invading and you've salted the slugs. Well, you've created a hypertonic environment. And that means higher solute concentration outside, lower water concentration outside the cell. And that means the water is going to flow out of the slug. And the slug is going to dehydrate and likely shrivel up and die. Now, if that's hypertonic, hypotonic is going to be the opposite. Because hypo means below. So now our solute concentration outside the cell is going to be lower and our water concentration outside the cell is going to be higher. So that'd be like having pure water outside the cell. What's going to happen? Well, in this case, we have to draw about five arrows from outside to in, outside to in, outside to in, outside to in. There's a net flow of water in and the cell swells. And if it's an animal cell, it may burst. If it's a plant cell, it may try to burst. It may run into its cell wall. But this time when you do your diagram, make sure you draw a bigger cell on your diagram. And you're going to write down that the cell swells. And for some reason that has an A there. That should be a B, but for some year we'll fix that. Now, C is isotonic. And if you remember from chemistry, iso means the same. Isotopes, isoelectronic, all those good things. So we've got to write in the word same. And what that means is the concentration of solutes inside and outside the cell are the same. And the same is true for water. So water can still flow into the cell, but every time some water flows in, some water will flow out. So the cell, the cell will stay the same size. So when you draw it from here to here, make it the same size. And as you might imagine, that an isotonic environment is the best environment for a cell, where it's not going to be forced to shrivel or swell. And that's what it's saying down here. Cells will function best in isotonic environments. So now you should know about what happens to a cell in a hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic environment.